much. I'm Christina Davis, Director of the Program on US-Japan Relations. It's wonderful to have you all here joining us today, both in, in person and online. We're having a discussion of the challenges facing the Japanese economy, looking at demography, debts, deglobalization, and decarbonization. Over the past three decades, we have seen major initiatives to reform the Japanese economy. Most notably, Prime Minister Hashimoto's Big Bang financial reform, Prime Minister Koizumi's postal privatization structural reform without sanctuaries, followed by Prime Minister Abe's three arrows of Abenomics. Indeed, Prime Minister Abe's three arrows of Abenomics included the aggressive monetary easing and zero interest rates, which were led by Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Yoda. These were seen as unprecedented. And I would be remiss not to notice that we have all been watching eagerly for his um, successor to be announced. And his term is coming to an end in April and markets and scholars alike have been watching closely in case this were to lead to a change in monetary policy. And last week we had the announcement that Kazuo Ueda will be the new governor of the Bank of Japan. Now this is a surprise in that he is an academic which in Japan has not typically been the path to Bank of Japan governor. He has his PhD from here in Cambridge, the other university, MIT. Uh, he's an economist, now emeritus from Tokyo University. And so something, maybe this is a change, but on the other hand, he was on the BOJ policy board and deeply committed to the monetary easing, low inflation rate policy. So it may not quite be a revolutionary change. But stepping back, this question of reform of the Japanese economy, you know, how much can the Bank of Japan do? And how much should the Bank of Japan be doing? In the end, many question whether it is the role of the Bank of Japan to set the course of reform. There are many broader conditions in the economy that shape the context and that the direction of reform should come from the political leadership. So there's been many new initiatives. I already mentioned those of previous prime ministers. Well, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida came into office in 2021 calling for a new form of capitalism that will achieve growth and equality through closer public-private cooperation. Investing in human capital, raising wages, startup ecosystem, and decarbonization. So many of these issues of new capitalism are going to be central to the talk today. We are really fortunate to have with us one of the leading experts on Japanese economic policy, Takatoshi Ito, who is professor at School of International Public Affairs at Columbia University. At Columbia, he is director of the Japanese Economy and Business Program on Public Pension Sovereign Funds and associate director of research. He received his PhD at Harvard best of the institutions in Cambridge, and he's the author of many, many books. Most recently, his classic book, The Japanese Economy, first published in 1992, came out with a second edition in 2020, co-authored with Takeo Hoshi, and it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend The Japanese Economy. It comes on top of many other books he's written on Japanese financial politics, from the political economy of Japanese monetary policy, financial policy, central banking in Japan, Managing Currency Risk, How Japanese Firms Choose Invoicing Currency, and of course, a wide set of articles in all of the top economics journals from Econometrica, American Economic Review, Journal of Monetary Economics. So we are really fortunate to have a leading economist here. He's also dedicated himself to public service. And so over his career, Professor Ito has also served as the chair of the Committee to Reform Asset Management of the Government Pension Investment Fund. He has also chaired a committee on asset management guidelines looking at the National University Fund. And he has been engaged in advising many of the key policies of Japanese economic reform, both as advisor to the research department in the IMF, he's engaged in international policy setting, when he was Deputy Vice Minister for International Affairs, he was working with the Ministry of Finance, and he's also been involved with the Prime Minister's Office in the Council of Economic and Fiscal Policy. So I have actually only touched on many of his accomplishments. We are just so delighted that you would be with us today, sharing your expertise. 
This event is co-sponsored by the Mosavar Romani Center for Business and Government at the Harvard Kennedy School, and also our Harvard Undergraduate Japan Policy Network. Thank you so much. I look forward to your remarks. Thank you, Christina. It's a very kind introduction. I appreciate it. And as um, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, challenges uh, facing the Japanese economy and the four Ds. And um, uh, those uh, four Ds are um, the uh, demographic change, debts, and the um, deglobalization and decoupling and decarbonization. So let me uh, talk. Um, briefly uh, talk about what I, I, I'm going to uh, speak about and some takeaways uh, uh, some people want to leave um, uh, towards the end. So demographic change is means that uh, Japan is uh, uh, becoming an aging society and um, a lot more elderly compared to the younger generations. And this top heavy demographic pyramid uh, produces a lot of um, economic problems and, and political problems. And just to mention uh, one, the uh, pension system, uh, pay as you go pension system becomes unsustainable. And this puts a, a unfair, I would say unfair burden on the younger generation. So younger generations are deprived of the resources and they cannot um, uh, envision better future. And this contributes to the Lower, uh, lower uh, fertility rate, and, and that you know regenerates itself of the um, uh, demographic change. Deaths. So the um, as uh, Christina mentions, uh, recent histories of uh, Japanese politics, and um, you know politicians want to politicians do not want to raise taxes. So when when the recession comes, the uh, Japanese government issue government bonds. And uh, when they try to go back to fiscal consolidation to uh, regain the sustainability, next crisis comes. So Japanese banking crisis, global uh, tech crisis, and uh, global financial crisis, which originated in the United States, and most recently, the COVID. So every crisis sort of ratcheted up the uh, uh, fiscal deficits, and that contributed to the mounting the uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio, which is now 250%, and uh, uh, much worse than any of the G7 or advanced uh, uh, countries. So many people think that um, a reckoning point may come uh, soon, sooner or later, and that is tied to this uh, uh, question on normalization of the monetary policy. And deglobalization and decoupling is putting the Japanese exporters in very difficult uh, positions. And um, many people think that Japanese, well, not many, but some, some fear that Japanese exporters may have to choose US or China. And um, uh, if that happens, then of course, uh, you, you are, you are Japan, Japanese uh, exporters uh, we will choose, I will choose, I, 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 I think that the United States and the West, but that means losing the Chinese markets. And, um, you know, of course, you, you, want to, uh, you want to avoid that, but that's politics. And um, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, I think, a risk scenario of the uh, uh, Japanese economy uh, uh, go, um, the next 10 years, I would say. <clears throat> The decarbonization has become very difficult for Japan uh, because of the Fukushima uh, accident. And um, uh, almost, all, uh, uh, all, almost all nuclear power plants have been shut down. And a few start restart, was, a few were restarted, but not in a massive scale. And uh, the um, uh, coal fired plants are still um, have you know, market share, uh, the electricity generation share of about 30%, which is one of the worst among the uh, G7 countries. And it has been very difficult for Japan to uh, move toward uh, decarbonization. 
Uh, and so, you know, economists would, all, almost all economists would say carbon tax would be a, with a uniform tax rate would be the answer to make uh, a decarbonization process most efficient. Uh, but that's uh, politically uh, very difficult. Okay, so that's the um, uh, sort of takeaways of this OD problems and uh, economist solution and political difficulties. All right. Okay, so here's uh, 10 seconds of advertisement before going into uh, uh, main content you have to endure. So this is the uh, textbook that Christian mentioned in 2020, and um, uh, this um, uh, I'm happy to uh, to um, uh, report. This has been well received uh, in uh, among the U.S. Uh, universities, and Japanese uh, translation is coming out next month. Chinese translation has been already uh, done. All right. So going into details. All right. So demography is um, uh, means this. Right, so young people, younger, so take the ratio between one elderly defined 65 years and older, and how many young people uh, are there to sort of support this um, uh, elderly person. And uh, there were nine young people in 1965, down to 2.4 by 2012. And uh, right now, 2020, it's like um, uh, two or slightly below two persons uh, supporting one elderly. And by 2050, only 1.2 young people uh, uh, supporting the elderly. So pay as you know pension means that, you know, I take $100 from uh, working uh, people. So in, back in 1960, putting everything very simply, so back in 1965, I could get $900 a month from the young, you know, young generations. Now it's only $200 to, to collect. Well, I can increase the pension premium, which is a social security tax in, in, in the US, and uh, raise that so that I can get the same uh, $900. But that put the younger generations uh, much worse in terms of the lifetime payment of social security tax. Well, so it's a generational conflict of the how much pension premium you you you, you want to pay and how much benefits you want to receive when you you retire. Many people think that what you are paying with social security tax or the social security premium, it's called the uh, insurance premium, it's called in, in Japan. That you think those money is supporting your elder elderly years. It is not. Pay as you go means young people pay the current old. So this supporting ratio matters uh, quite a bit. And um, it's the same in the US, same in Japan, and this is mainly pay as you go. Uh, in Japan, there is something called the government pension fund, investment fund, which is a buffer. With, uh, of this um, uh, demographic change, which I don't have time to go into today. So Japan is better than uh, US in terms of the preparing for this demographic change. Although US is better uh, in terms of the uh, population growth rate, mainly immigration to, to the US. Okay, so this is um, uh, the main problem of aging uh, society, but the um, um, there is, uh, so this is another uh, picture that uh, population ratio, the blue line means this uh, ratio, which I just explained. You might say, if more people work, uh, this population ratio may not be, uh, so can be overcome, the problem can be overcome. The workers to retired ratio is a red line and it's declined uh, almost same as the population ratio, except, in the very end, uh, since 2013, the red sort of leveled off, which means that Japanese women and elderly are now much more working uh, participate in the labor market than before. And so that mitigated the decline of the population ratio. And, uh, but that's the uh, very slight uh, improvement compared to the long-term decline 
of this um, uh, support uh, uh, ratio. Okay, so this is a, uh, what I was talking about the demographic pyramid and how much uh, elderly compared to the uh, how many young. So I just picked uh, 1950, uh, which is uh, the year I was born, and uh, 2020. And so all the baby boomers, which is uh, three years uh, before I was born, so that the very bottom three years of the 1950, take that and go to 2020, which is um, 63, uh, 60, um, 65 uh, to uh, 67 on that. So um, uh, magnify that. Oops. Okay, so magnify that. Uh, this is 2020. So uh, the baby movements are just before uh, 75 right now. So 73, 74, 75, that's the baby movements. And now they are going to 75 and older. And 75 and older in Japan, they're called, um, uh, they're called uh, super elderly. And they require the, they, they have different uh, uh, medical, um, the health insurance and support a heavier subsidy from, uh, from the state, the uh, uh, government. So which means that they, and also they require more medical and health um, uh, expenditures. And um, I'm not looking forward to become super elderly. But um, uh, you you become one, and then that is a burden on the government by more heavier uh, uh, subsidies, and again the heavier burden on the younger generation. So this is coming in a few years, and uh, so social equity expenditure will rise, um, sort of accelerates uh, to rise uh, in a few years. Okay, so this is well known, but. The um, but the um, uh, uh, policies are not you know, sufficient to uh, counter that. So this uh, sort of flowchart of how the things uh, are going that the low birth rate and longer life expectancy, which itself is a good thing, is causing this uh, popu uh, population ratio to a uh, become um, uh, adverse to the younger generations. And the uh, pension system becomes unsustainable, and um, uh, low saving happens, and shrinking markets means that um, uh, the um, the uh, firms would not invest in Japan. So Japanese firms investing in U.S., Europe, Asia, and so on, but not in Japan, and that is um, uh, contribute to low growth and um, low innovation and um, uh, worse jobs for younger generation. This is again, additional burden on the younger generations. Okay, so uh, this is a flow chart. This is uh, how the savings have declined uh, over the years, especially the government sector saving has declined, which means uh, fiscal deficits. So, Going down means that saving, domestic saving has um, uh, declined. All right. So next second problem, I have to um, I have to hurry. So um, going fast, the debt problem. So uh, this um, uh, government try to support those um, uh, elderly, social security, and also uh, those crisis spending and uh, fiscal deficit increase and accumulated deficits are debts and that has risen to the level 250 percent which is um, uh, unprecedentedly high and much worse than the uh, us you know we are talking about 100 uh, percent of gdp debt and you know there are a lot of um, uh, worries in the washington dc um but 250 percent that's a two, two and a half times than US. Now, so stagnations and uh, uh, stagnations require government to support the um, uh, aggregate demand side. Luckily, inflation rate was low and interest rate was low. So burden on the uh, government finance was appeared to be low. And so they are printing bonds and printing bonds and interest rate didn't rise. So there was no warning of the um, of the um, uh, large debts 
till this year. And um, now the inflation rate today is uh, like 4%, but much, much lower than US or UK. But still, 4% is, um, is uh, highest uh, since 1980s and uh, above 2% inflation target. So if the 4% persists, then sooner or later, or maybe sooner, that the bank which bound have to raise, but has to raise the interest rate, get the so-called normalization from the QQE, the quantitative and qualitative easing. And that will may be a recording point of the um, this debt problem. Okay. So uh, if and when that happens, then uh, uh, government uh, and BOJ uh, have uh, several options that um, uh, the um, uh, JGBs that BOJ stop buying due to end of the QPE and uh, long term interest rate has, have to, has to rise, which is the end of the YCC yield curve control, and short term interest rate has to rise. That's the policy uh, uh, rate to rise. Okay, so that would be a huge burden on the government finance, and um, uh, that is um, uh, that will cause the sort of the, uh, instability in the government um, uh, uh, bond uh, market and financial markets in general. And uh, many sort of the investors are uh, thinking about this scenario that um, I hear in New York that uh, foreign investors are uh, uh, thinking about this, this scenario. Uh, and um, uh, still the probability is low that something radical, something, um, uh, something very bad would happen. The probability is low, I would say, but something has to be done uh, before this uh, reckoning point comes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there are some few charts from the textbook and updated. And so this is um, uh, deficits. Uh, this um, uh, the bar, the dark bars are the new bond issues, which is the fiscal deficit. So it was jumped in um, uh, after the Japanese uh, government, sorry, banking crisis of 1978, and then again in the global financial crisis. And again, huge uh, COVID, uh, uh, COVID uh, crisis. So uh, we are, you know, they, they try to lower this uh, new bond issues in the peacetime, but when crisis comes, it jumps up again. And it's very difficult for the, um, the government or the Ministry of Finance to control this um, uh, fiscal deficits problem. And this is the debt of um, which I was talking about, close to 250%. And um, uh, compared to the other G7 countries, which are the lines, that this is really, uh, really high uh, uh, ratio. Okay. So, however, the peculiar thing about due to this COVID and QQE that the Bank of Japan has uh, buying is government bonds, and about half is now owned by Bank of Japan. So government issue bonds, Bank of Japan buys them. What does it mean, right? It's, which is still in the same public sector. Some people think that is good because you know central bank um, finances government and there's interest rate low and no problem. Some people worry very much because central bank is financing fiscal deficits and that is a a no-no in the old uh, uh, economics textbook and and that leads to high rate inflation and because government doesn't have any restraint and printing money well printing bonds bought by bank of japan means printing money and uh, that will have um, a very bad end of the story we haven't seen the end of the story, right? So, uh, but this I'm pointing this out as a um, uh, risk um, uh, scenario that uh, the so the Bank of Japan and, and the government has uh, now the interlocked 
uh, 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 problem of the high government debt and uh, uh, considerably easier. The deglobalization. So <clears throat> this one is a um, uh, difficult uh, one for economists to present some uh, uh, solutions because that is highly political as you, uh, you, you, you um, have witnessed. It is mostly caused by the United States, Donald Trump and um, uh, Biden administrations are like that um, uh, they do not, uh, they, I would say, disregard WTO and disregard global uh, trading system. And so US, uh, so Donald Trump um, signed a decree to get out of TPP, which is a Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership, basically free trade in the uh, Pacific region, excluding China. And um, uh, so I would say it's a democratic free trade area, and Japan and US were supposed to um, take a lead in um, uh, not just the free trade, but the um, uh, uh, tech industry and other patent issues and so on to not uh, standardize in the uh, in this group. Donald Trump uh, signed and get out. I, we, we are hoping that um, uh, Mr. Biden will come back, uh, sign the agree to come back into TPP. He did for the Paris Agreement. He did not for the TPP. That is huge disappointment for um, Mr. Abe. And uh, then uh, uh, China uh, is um, uh, applying to TPP. And also China and Japan has this RCEP, which is a uh, uh, ASEAN, 10 countries plus six countries, including Japan, Korea, and China. And then we have this uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine and um, uh, the sanctions on, on the US and um, uh, China seems to be uh, supporting, uh, if not sanctioning, uh, on Russia. So uh, now we are seeing sort of divided world of the West, including Japan, and Russia, China, and third group, so the neutrals in uh, Southeast Asia and um, uh, other uh, emerging market economies. And what do you do with these three groups? in um, trading system, international financial system, which currencies introduce, uh, and, uh, and so on. So W2 is clearly uh, uh, done. And um, uh, what is a new trading system, international financial system, with these three groups? And if not, this uh, Russian uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine uh, resulted in some of uh, some truths uh, or the answers uh, soon. Uh, I uh, I think the glo uh, the uh, globalization is over, and we have to find what the new system, if ever system, uh, uh, will happen. Okay, so I have mentioned this. All right, so. Japan, in the meantime, that, uh, has become trade deficit country. So the rate bar going down uh, below zero is a trade deficit. And that is now still offset by so-called primary income account, which is the interest and dividend from past foreign in the overseas investment. So now Japan is living on in, in, in the international the balance of payment sense on the interest and dividend income earned from abroad due to the past accumulated trade surpluses which was invested in abroad and that is financing this huge expensive um, energy inputs so so far it's okay uh, because this um, uh, your um, uh, financial income uh, pays for this um, uh, trade deficit. But it, it's worrisome to see this uh, trade um, uh, deficit, which may show that exporting industries in Japan are losing its power, their power. Okay? And um, uh, that is not good in the sense of the Japanese manufacturing, 
and Japanese workers, because they don't have a good job. Okay, so um, decolonization. Um, so it's uh, sad to say that Japan is lagging in the use of uh, electric vehicles, solar panels, I mean, power renewable uh, in general. And it's sad to say that Japan is still uh, burning a lot of coals to get the electricity. And, um, uh, you know, it's still importing Russian uh, natural gas. Um, so um, it, it is uh, the sort of, we don't see the master plan of decarbonization of the Japanese um, economy. So what Prime Minister Kishida and his government decided was at least we can do more nuclear power in electricity generation. This is a U-turn from the past policy after the Fukushima accidents, incidents. And um, uh, so at that time, you know, in 2011, government was quick to say that, okay, we're gonna abolish nuclear power plants uh, gradually by setting the limit of operation to 40 years, and uh, we will go um, full speed for renewables. Now it's a U-turn that we are allowed the nuclear power plants to operate uh, for uh, 60 years, and maybe beyond 60 years, if they are shut down for, um, uh, uh, for several years, we add on those years to uh, 60. So clearly that Japanese government is thinking there's no way to get the uh, uh, clean energy uh, uh, in, in, in the short term, medium term. We have to rely on nuclear power and we buy time and we try to make innovations in uh, the renewables and um, uh, maybe fuel cell cars. Instead, instead of EVs, because EVs use electricity, which is dirty uh, uh, in, in, in Japan uh, now. So um, this puts a lot of uh, problems. So this is an EV percent in stock, uh, how much EVs are. Japan is um, uh, less than 1%. US is no better, uh, as you know. And um, of course, the California, it's, uh, California it's, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, Written like a country, but California is much, much better. And um, uh, northern countries are um, especially better in the EVs. Okay. So uh, this is the sort of the Paris Agreement um, uh, uh, a number that um, uh, how much uh, greenhouse gas emissions, GHG emissions are, and this is um, uh, the number which is used for the Paris Agreement targets and so on. This looks not that bad after 2013, okay? So it was a sort of up and down until 2011 when this emission went sh shot up because the Fukushima accident and um, nuclear shut down. They had to import, import a lot of uh, natural gas to quickly uh, uh, generate electricity. Since then, since 2013, it has made a huge effort to bring down this uh, uh, GHG uh, emissions. So despite what I've said in the, uh, one slide before, that um, uh, yes, Japan is making, uh, uh, making, uh, right. making um, uh, progress in uh, this GHG uh, emissions, but going forward, it will become more difficult to continue uh, this downward uh, uh, trend. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Yeah, this is electricity generation, and uh, nuclear suddenly became from 30% to almost zero after 2011, and coal is still burning in, in Japan. Natural gas is still burning, and uh, some green people criticize Japan as, uh, uh, as heavily on, on this point. Okay, so policies. Okay, policies in, in uh, five minutes. Okay, so um, on the um, 
demography. So recently, um, Kishida Prime Minister Kishida announced that he wants to increase the subsidies to the family with uh, young children and uh, basically double the amount of the subsidies to to a uh, cash subsidies and um, also the uh, tuition uh, or tuition uh, uh, free tuition for the high school uh, students uh, and so on. So uh, those uh, subsidies for young, um, family for young children, that's good. That is the pains and cost of, of, of raising children. But economists think that these cash subsidies um, may not increase the fertility rate if that is the objective. And um, uh, economists would say that uh, uh, shorter hours, remote working environment for both mothers and fathers would be very important, which is lacking in Japan. And also more availability uh, of uh, nursery and kind kindergarten. That is more important. And uh, that is still restricted. There are a lot of restrictions um, uh, to put the um, uh, uh, to put the kids into uh, nursery. I, I know this because my uh, daughter and son are struggling to get the babies into nursery. And um, um, so, um, and also the better wage and salaries for young, young people because they're very much underpaid for various uh, reasons, which I don't have time to go into. So younger generations are really uh, unfairly burdened from this uh, demography and other things, and which is not um, uh, uh, which is not uh, rectified. Okay, so um, the debt. So could Kishida government turn around, turn turn, turn this uh, trend and sustainable path uh, around? Well, there, there are only several options to do that. Tax rate hike, new kind of tax like wealth tax, possibly, expenditure cut or asset sales, or just pray for higher growth rates so that um, <laughs> uh, it will generate automatically increase um, increase tax uh, revenues. That that's only you know that that's the options, and um, economists would favor that raising the consumption tax rate, which is a value added tax. So right now it's 10%. It was 5% before Abe took uh, uh, over. So during the eight years, almost eight years in power, he raised the VAT twice. So many people think Abe, Prime Minister Abe, is a um, sort of the easy, uh, easy money, easy fiscal, uh, I don't know, policy person, but no, he was, he cared about this uh, fiscal sustainability and he raised twice the, uh, about rates. And um, uh, that is sort of postponing this recording point. Uh, and economists prefer this 10% to, to rise farther. And that should finance the uh, child care uh, expenditures, social security tax. Uh, social security expenditure subsidy portion from the government. And I didn't uh, put that down in my talk, but the uh, defense uh, expenditures, which, uh, which will rise uh, for obvious reasons. So um, BAT also uh, mitigate this generational inequality because rich elderly consume and pay consumption tax, right? If you put uh, an extra tax on the personal income tax, then that is burden on the working people and mostly younger generation. So raising the personal income tax rates for paying for this, you know, uh, uh, nursery and kindergarten and defense and uh, all other social ex um, security expenditures, that uh, exacerbates this inequality of old and and young, and the VAT is much more fair uh, and fairer and uh, more efficient way of taxing the uh, rich people. So the younger generations shouldn't complain 
about BAT, but they do. So, and politicians, if they care about younger generation, politicians should favor raising BAT, but they 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 uh, don't have the um, uh, they don't have the guts to propose BAT hike. Okay, so um, the um, uh, deglobalization is very hard to come up with the uh, good um, uh, economic. Um, uh, policy solution because it's mostly political. And now this economic security has become a really important topic. And the, um, the economic security minister position was created. So clearly that is very important. Uh, uh, and um, uh, it is very difficult. So basically economists are very um, much at loss or thinking about how to counter this deglobalization, except maybe we have to uh, we have to have better education to get the um, uh, economic security and also the higher output uh, uh, exports from Japan. Okay, lastly, so um, uh, deglobalization. So yes, nuclear um, uh, for medium term probably okay, but uh, renewables have to come uh, in the end. And how to achieve that is the question. And the economists, almost uh, all economists would favor carbon tax and uniform rates for the across the industries. And if possible at all, the uniform rate for the older countries, across the country. But politically, it's very difficult. And um, uh, it is, it is um, uh, not um, uh, going well in Japan or the world. And so that's the, that's the situation. So um, thank you very much. And um, uh, that is uh, my, um, I don't know, more pessimistic uh, uh, assessment of where Japan is. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for addressing a whole range of the issues that confront the Japanese economy. Really impressive. Um, we have our first question from Takatsu Haneo, who is one of our associates with the program on US-Japan relations, coming from Kedanren, the Japanese Business Association. He's spending his year here at Harvard researching on US fiscal policy, looking at economic growth and fiscal consolidation. Professor Ita, thank you for your great presentation. I understand uh, about uh, uh, body problems and the solutions in Japan well. I have a question about monetary policy in Japan, uh, especially about exit strategy uh, that will take place uh, uh, someday. Uh, BOJ has uh, not only government bonds, uh, as you explained, but also has huge amount of ETF, uh, if uh, BOJ sell this ETF, uh, the market will be affected a lot. So what do you think about uh, the exit strategy of monetary policy in Japan, uh, especially about ETF? Thank you. So um, my prediction is that Bank of Japan is not in a hurry to sell ETF. Because ETF is actually earning quite a bit of dividends uh, from holding. And uh, they need uh, those income when they get out of the government bond buying and raising the long-term interest rate and eventually short-term interest rate. And since they have this huge amount uh, of um, uh, long bonds that uh, their evaluation will go down as interest rate goes up and their income is remains low for a long time because it's a long-term government bonds and it's a fixed interest uh, fixed coupon rates. While when the short, right, short term rates goes up, then they have to pay interest to the ex, um, uh, excess reserves, which is a result of the um, the uh, uh, aging. So they, their um, income will become less than their payment of the short term reserves. And that means uh, negative seniorage uh, or uh, deficits of their um, uh, accounts. So having this ETF dividend would be a helpful for the DOJ, and there is no reason they have to sell 
uh, in Muslim Bihar. Thank you. We have a question from Kristen Bacasey, professor at the University of Maine, mm -hmm. who's joining us remotely. And um, picking up on, in your conclusion, you said that Japan needs higher value exports. And Kristen's question is, how do the balance of trade results change when you think about trade and value-added figures? And more generally, Japan is strong in a lot of specialized high-value-added components. And is that going to be sufficient to help its long-term economic strength? Okay, so um, it depends on what is high value added. And more recently, that this COVID and um, uh, Japan failed to develop the uh, vaccines. They couldn't, you know, come up with the uh, vaccines made in Japan vaccines. So they have been importing a lot of um, uh, Pfizer and uh, Moderna, and they're paying for it. The government pays for it, and it's like two. Three um, yen imports um, and of the vaccines. So uh, if they had had those um, uh, 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 the um, innovations, uh, actually they, the government stopped the um, science um, uh, uh, science um, uh, grant to uh, those um, messenger RNA uh, vaccine. Uh, uh, developer in at the University of Tokyo before this all happened. So um, uh, clearly, science and technology education in Japan is uh, uh, revamped and um, uh, put more money into it. Um, another example is that Japan couldn't um, fly the new jet airliner. They suspended. They stopped. Uh, just announced that they stopped the uh, regional jet uh, project. So they continue to uh, import the, those uh, Boeings and Airbuses for the in foreseeable future. So, um, yes, Japan is strong in this uh, semiconductor uh, uh, machine tools. So they, they export the machines which will be used in the uh, 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 making uh, semiconductors in China and uh, Taiwan, but they themselves cannot Produce this um, uh, uh, semiconductors. So uh, this um, uh, there there are strengths in, in in the machine tools and um, also the uh, 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 also the uh, carbon fiber, which is now uh, used in Boeing and Airbuses. So it's kind of um, uh, pluses and minuses. And if they could expand the areas of this uh, pluses, that that be good, and um, uh, high value added would be good. Um, but more recently, that Japan or the Japanese government tried to promote the Japanese food for the rest of the world, <laughs> and uh, there is a target for how much agriculture exports they can achieve, and they are actually over over achieving. Uh, so that you you get sake and uh, sashimi directly uh, import from directly import from uh, uh, what used to be Tsukiji now the Toyosu market. Um, um, but I, I I don't know. I think agriculture goods uh, there's a, there's a limit. It's not high value added uh, uh, items. So I think the Japanese government has to rethink really what where that they, their subsidy should go and try to promote and actually you know basic research in the university is uh, very important great yeah oh, a lot of questions okay great uh trevor and let's all keep our questions short so that more people get a chance to speak um thank you very much for this great presentation this question is actually very similar to Kristen's and kind of turning to um decarbonization mm -hmm. and uh deglobalization Mm -hmm. um, Japan has kind of shown is, is lagging behind not just on EV use mm -hmm. but also on sort of production and technological development. Mm -hmm. um, so that was interesting talking about the mRNA vaccines, for example, where Japan needs something from abroad in a crisis and mm -hmm. has shown willingness to subsidize that for its citizens. With decarbonization, with Japan seems to be reluctant to purchase and invest in things that its producers are not at the forefront of. One exception where Japan is at the forefront is nuclear technology, right? Um, so do you see a willingness from the Japanese government to 
subsidized purchases of, say, electric vehicles, of wind turbines, if these things have to be imported from abroad? Or do we sort of have to wait for Japanese domestic producers to catch up on that technology before they be willing the government? Right, thank you very much. So um, uh, solar panels, uh, as you know, that uh, in the beginning that Japan tried to produce domestic government, huge subsidies went into it. Uh, didn't happen. Uh, wind turbine, almost speak uh, uh, wind, wind um, is um, uh, windmill is um, uh, imported from Denmark and I cannot produce uh, domestically. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's it's um, I, I, I feel it's uh, not good in the uh, technological uh, front. The uh, production of steel uh, requires a lot of a um, uh, lot of uh, emission. Uh, and uh, they, uh, Japanese, um, uh, tried to develop the ammonia burning uh, steel mill. And um, uh, that is, um, well, we have to wait to see. Toyota is uh, you, uh, often criticized that they're behind uh, in this uh, EV adoption. Uh, and uh, some say they try to, they, they try to promote a fuel cell. Uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cell. Uh, that's why they are reluctant to go to the um, uh, plug-in EVs. So um, they may be bidding on the wrong technology, or they're hoping that new innovation would, uh, would sort of leapfrog this um, uh, decarbonization. Um, but um, it's it's not. It doesn't look good, at least in the short run. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, I should stop here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor People. I, I'm, not, I'm not an academia, so I can't compare apples and apples. I'm a, but I operate an independent consulting business in Japan. And I, um, I respect everything the data you show, but I actually I differ with you on Japan's approach to decarbonization. Okay. Your, your actual curve, your, your reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, you've shown a sharp decrease in, in and that despite the fact that uh, they're not giving up on coal as a source. Mm -hmm. So let me just, uh, just a couple, this is a more uh, evidential. Very short, yeah. So coal, the Japanese coal industry, uh, uh, electric production companies are relying on coal and they're all, looking at all kinds of ways to capture the carbon mm -hmm. and as well as diversify with biomass, mm -hmm. which is, they're making incremental progress to that too. Uh, the, the EVs are not the panacea if you don't have a renewable source of energy. Mm -hmm. Three, uh, the, 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 the feed-in tariffs of solar have been an uh, uh, incredible success in terms of getting penetration of solar into the market with over 64 megawatts already close to being online. I know it's just capacity in solar has all kinds of issues of connectivity. And finally, I think what Japan's approach to uh, green growth innovation, uh, the green growth strategy, uh, green innovation fund, is actually seeing all these uh, mid, mid to large size city seats actually implements uh, climate action plans that are realistic and achievable as, as, as opposed to what you see ad hoc mm -hmm. here in the US. Now, the future, who knows? It's, it's, it's very hard to see whether there, Japan will become a leader, uh, the leader in the space, but I, I'm very bullish um, and they are a model for Asia in terms of decarbonization and I'll put back. But that is my end. Thank you. Thank you very much for the optimistic uh, uh, assessment. And um, I'm not an expert on those uh, carbon capture technology or biomass. Um, so I, no, I, I just thank you for your, 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 that input. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, two questions. First is that about TBP. Uh, since Japan is remaining very uh, consistent in including uh, foreign U U US again into the TPP, mm -hmm. uh, how do you differentiate uh, the TPP with the, in the new economic, the in the Pacific economic framework for Japan? I mean, the second is that. Uh, no, only one question each. Okay, Wait. thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think TPP is important uh, in, in um, having US back because the, some of the uh, agreements with the rest of the is CPTPP, which is uh, 11 countries um, uh, uh, remain, remained, uh, but the, some of the agreements are shelved because US is not, not, not in. So the emerging market economies, uh, they, they 
or hesitant to adopt some of the uh, technology standard and uh, uh, and uh, uh, tech standards because, but but they agree because U.S. they, they could get the U.S. markets uh, if they don't join the TPP. So without U.S. that TPP sort of standards, which you know uh, beyond uh, free trade, goods trade uh, is uh, uh, incomplete and will not have the full power of the um, uh, of the um, uh, agreement. So. Um, uh, that's that's why Japan needs U.S. back. Very short. Uh, I want two questions. Very short, and then we'll have to close up. So, a question about uh, the two the debt level as a percentage mm -hmm. of GDP, two hundred fifty percent. I remember a few years ago there was discussion uh, when J Japanese debt was one hundred fifty percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. But at that time, the assessment was it was it's, it was not a problem because most of Japanese debt were yen denominated domestic mm -hmm. debt. Therefore, um, as long as Japanese savings were high and the bank of Japan. Bank of Japan can buy more, mm -hmm. essentially monetize the debt. Yeah. It's not a problem. It, does that argument still hold at current level of debt? Current level, yes, but that, uh, not, not, uh, not in 10 years because uh, saving, domestic savings are declining, as I, I, I showed you. So, the more, uh, so elderly people uh, use their accumulated savings, so they, they dissave. Right. And um, uh, young, younger people who save for the lifetime uh, uh, saving number is shrinking. So as uh, households in general, in, in, in total, savings rate is declining, saving amount is declining. And uh, BOJ will stop buying those government bonds uh, and the normalization. So two conditions you mentioned that they are fine will be not fine. Mm -hmm. Would it add, extending the retirement age help? And what are the implications of digital currency for the yen? Our two online questions. But most important is our last question in the room. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a question about the uh, your thought about the migrant policy. I think the as you mentioned that the aging society. So even we had uh, you know two twice more kids, but it takes 20, 20 years to have more population. So I think the uh, migrant or uh, immigration policy should be, um, I, I can say, modified to some extent. And for, for me personally, your passport uh, would be uh, one of the solutions. So what do you say your thoughts so far? If you could close that one. Okay. In the retirement age, migration issues, okay. and the possibility of digital currency. Okay, so retirement age, extending retirement age, is um, uh, is is a good policy to uh, help this um, the demography aging society question. However, that means that younger current younger generations have to work longer, paying more um, social security premium. And the, the benefit period becomes shorter compared to without reform. But it has to happen, and it, it's happening. And um, um, I think that will help in terms of the, uh, uh, this system of, uh, of the uh, pension system. The immigration helps, of course. The um, uh, more, more young immigrants come, come to Japan, work, pay, Work and pay uh, the social security premium uh, is, is good, and probably diversity also helps the innovations uh, and so on. And um, uh, also labor shortage in the low skill uh, uh, labor too. But uh, politicians, I think that there are uh, there are many politicians who worry about so-called social fabric. Of, uh, of the society and um, uh, the, um, uh, I, I think the um, solution would be more selective uh, uh, immigration in the uh, skills specified. And um, uh, that, is, uh, that is actually happening. Uh, but um, problem is that high skill 
jobs um, in Japan pay much less than high skill job uh, abroad, Europe or US or even Asia. So they wouldn't come. And even the low skill uh, jobs that um, uh, many other countries are now trying to get those immigrants from Vietnam and others. So uh, Japan will not get it. So it's not, it used to be the case that Japan, Japanese government says, don't come. But now you invite the immigrants and you can, they don't come because Japan is not paying well for those. Uh, so they need so much divided. Right, yeah, that's, that's part of it. And uh, digital currency, it will happen, but after China and New York uh, introduce those uh, central bank digital funds. Meaning that Japan would start to use the renminbi digital currency? No, 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 no. They, no. No, they, they try to see how those uh, the central bank, uh, uh, central bank digital currency would, would work, and they think that works. And if there is some threat from renminbi invention into Japan, then yes, the bank Japan will issue those central bank um, uh, digital currency. Yeah. Thank you so very much, you much for a wide-ranging conversation. Really appreciate you sharing your expertise. Thank, Thank you very much. much.